Hi again, this is Jeff, your ProtoPy expert answering your ProtoPy questions. Today's question comes from Jason. Jason asks, is it possible to prototype an app switcher on a mobile device where you can swipe up to close an app and all the apps on the right move left by one app? Yeah, it is possible, and it's easier than you might think. In my pie here, I have a very simple composition. I have one item, that's this rectangle shape, and this is to represent the thumbnail of an app. I could use an image here, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna use a colored shape. Um, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna make copies of this, but because all of my logic for handling the reordering and everything will be, uh, I'm gonna to need to repeat it across a bunch, uh, all of the app thumbnails here, I'm gonna make a component out of this. And if you don't know, a component is a master copy of an object that you can make copies of within your Pi, and it will inherit all of the same uh, properties and logic that you make in the one. So if you need to do something that's repetitive, a good way to cut down on repetitive work is to use a component. And since we need to make a bunch of copies that do all the same thing, we're gonna turn this into a component. So I'm gonna right click this shape and I'm gonna say, create component. And my component shows up now in my component drawer. And if you don't see it, that's this icon here in your scenes here. Uh, it looks like a like a library with a lightning bolt beside it. You click that, you're going to see your component show up here. Uh, it's given it the name of the shape. The shape was called rectangle one, and it's named that component rectangle one. But let's give it a name that's a bit more descriptive. I'm going to call it app. And the copy that I have on my scene, I'm going to call this app one. And we're going to make a bunch of copies of it. Uh, and you can make copies by dragging it out from your components drawer. And I'm just going to snap it there. I'm going to add 30 pixels of spacing. Hold down shift. Press the right arrow three times, one, two, three. That moves it by 10 pixels every time you hit the arrow key. And that makes now 30 pixels of spacing in there. I can make a copy with Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V on Windows. And let's pop that there, one, two, three. Uh, I can do it by duplicating, and that is Command D or Control D on Windows. And once again, I'll pop that there, one, two, three. I can hold down the Alt or Option key as I drag, and that'll just make a copy. Pop it there, one, two, three. And I think I have one, two, three, four, five of these. I'm gonna make one more. Uh, so Command C, Command V, pop it there, one, two, three. So now I have six copies of this, uh, of this app component. And you're gonna notice that Protopie was pretty smart at naming these sequentially. Because the first one was called app one, the next copy gets app two, app three, app four, app five, app six. It's kind of important that we know which one is what because this is gonna become a little bit more critical later on when we add in our logic and we need to know which one has been removed. So it's good to have this numbering system in there, especially when you've got multiple copies of the same component. So great. Um, one problem we have right now is they all look the same. The neat thing about components is certain things are customizable. So if you've got shapes uh, in your component, you can change the fill, for example, and we can do that. We can change the fill. I'm gonna change the color to this orange here and in each of these you don't have to just change the color if you wanted to have images in here to make this look a bit more realistic you can do that so instead of a solid color you can click up here and choose image and then you'd be able to drop an image in here so this is a default image that it gives you but uh, you would click here choose an image and you can pop that in in our case I'm just going to use solid colors just to show that we can make these customizable and keep things simple here very important to recognize that you are not clicking on the component instance itself, you're clicking on the shape inside. And we'll give it this next color, which is this purpley color. And we'll give the next one this darker blue color. And this last one, we'll give it maybe that teal color. That's the last choice here. Okay. Now, if I preview this, you're gonna see not much is going on. I can't scroll this and everything, but all I have is this yellow rectangle and a peak of the next one in here. Let's make this scrollable. I'm gonna put everything in a scrolling container and specifically, I'm gonna use a paging container. So we're gonna click the container icon, choose paging container. And let's go back to my main scene here. Paging container, I'm just gonna draw one out here. Uh, and what I'm going to do next is size this to the full width and height of the screen. So let's position it at zero, zero, and then I don't have to know the width and height. I can just put 100%, 100%, and that'll automatically scale it to the width and height of the screen. Um, now for this to scroll the content within, all of these items need to be within the container. So I'm gonna hold down shift, click the first one, click the sixth one, and just drag them all into this container. And let's rename this paging. 
container. There we go. Now this should start working. So I'm gonna preview this and, okay, so it is working, but it's not quite right. And you're gonna notice it's not scrolling the right amount here. By default, a paging container will page the width of the paging container itself, which is 365, uh, 375 pixels, the width of the screen. Um, we want it to page the width of an app plus the spacing, which was 30, 30 pixels. So the width of an app is, choose one of them here, 255 pixels and our spacing was 30. You can customize the paging distance. So I'm gonna click on the paging container and in the properties panel, um, where it says page by, you can change it from the default to custom. And here's where you can put the distance in here. So we want 255 plus 30 is 285. Now when I preview this, there we go, look at that. Okay, that is paging, but it's not doing much else. So if I try to swipe this up, nothing happens. Let's add all that logic. And we're gonna add all of the logic for our app tiles in the master component, the master app component. That way we don't have to duplicate it for every single one that's in here. So in order to edit the master component, you need to have your components drawer open. And like I said, you can do that by clicking on this icon here. And I'm gonna double click the app component. All right, what I wanna do is I wanna make it such that I can pull it upwards. And we're gonna use the pull trigger for that. So I'm gonna add a trigger, I'm gonna use pull, and it will be on the top level container here, which is app. So when I pull the app and I wanna choose upwards, by a distance of, and this is the point at which the pull is committed. And I'll explain this a little bit more when I can show you, but I'm gonna put in 100 pixels. So essentially what you need to do is pull it upwards by 100 pixels for any of the responses under here to fire. And then once that pull is committed, I want to move it completely out of the way. So I'm gonna move the app, move to negative 700 pixels. And essentially this is moving it off screen to the top. So let's go back to our scene and you can get back to your scene by either double clicking the scene one component or you could have used the navigator at the top, but I'm already back in my scene here. I should be able to pull these items now. So I can pull it and there we go. I can pull them and they move out of the way. And remember I was talking about the distance of hundred pixels. If I only move it a little bit, you're gonna see if I let go, it goes back to where it was. It needs to hit that 100 pixel threshold in order for it to fully move out of the way. Okay. so. We can move them out of the way, but our apps are not moving leftward whenever we do that. Let's add that in. Now, the first thing we need to do is each of these apps needs to have a unique number. That way we're gonna know which one was moved because if we remove app three, we only want four, five, and six to move to the left. We don't want one, one and two to move at all. What we're gonna do is in our app component, I'm gonna go back and edit my master. I'm gonna create a variable here. And you can create a variable in the bottom left. And if it's collapsed like this, just click it once and it will open the, the variables panel. And we'll call this app number. I want it to be a number. And most importantly, I want this to be overridable. And this means that I can change its value from the scene. So I've made it overridable and by default it's zero and that's fine because in the scene we're gonna change that. Let's go back to the scene. And in app one, you're gonna see now I have app number appear here in my properties panel. I'm gonna change this to one. I'm gonna change the next one to two. And important that it's sequential like this, you're gonna see why in a second. Three, four, five, and six. Now the approach that I'm gonna take is when the app has been moved off screen, I'm gonna use a range trigger to detect when it's reached minus 500 pixels, so mostly off screen, and I'm gonna send a message to all the other components to say, I'm number three, I've just been removed. Um, anything that's greater than three, move to the left. So let's do that. We want to detect when the app has been moved up uh, to the minus 500 pixel mark. So. I'm gonna add a trigger. I'm gonna use the range trigger for this. And you might think I could use the detect trigger. And detect trigger can work, but it's a li little bit trickier. If you just use detect and say when it's less than minus 500, it'll fire at minus five, 501, minus 502, minus 503, minus 504, et cetera. So you have to do a little bit more work to make sure it only fires at negative 500. Uh, if we use the range, the way range works is once you cross that threshold, it just fires once. So my threshold is going to be when the Y 
uh, property of the app is less than or equal to negative 500. So on the app y property, I'm going to use the second option, less than or equal to negative 500. And like I said, that's when it's mostly off screen, not when it's fully off screen. You're going to say we're moving it to negative 700, but I want the, uh, the reordering to start when it's mostly off screen, but not fully. So when it's moved to minus 500, we are going to do something. I am going to send a message to the current scene because I want all of the other components to receive it and they're going to listen on the current scene. And this message is reorder. Actually, let's call it shift because we're not really reordering them. We're just shifting them to the left. So we'll call this shift. And what I need to do is I need to send the value of the current one that's being removed. So I'm going to send the value and I'm going to choose the formula option here and press plus and I'm going to choose app number. So I mean, sending the, oops, it didn't commit, it didn't get that here, app number. There we go, click OK. It's going to send the shift message along with the app being removed. Now, all of these component instances will receive this message. So now I have to add the trigger to receive that message. So I'm going to add a receive trigger. It's this one right here. And from the current scene, I need to make sure it matches my send, send to the current scene, receive from the current scene, and the message is shift. And if we, if we do this, it is sending along. If you recall here, we did the send. It's sending the app number. We're going to use this in the receive to determine if this particular component should move. And it should only move if this component's app number is greater than the one being removed. So in our receive, we're going to assign to a variable the value that's being passed along, which if you recall was the app number here. And we need to assign it to a variable. I don't want to assign it to app number because we don't want that to change. I'm going to make a new variable over here. And I'm going to call this removed app. Okay, and then, so now I'm assigning it to remove app and I'm going to create a condition. And my condition is if the app number, and that's this component instance or copies app number is greater than, and I'm going to choose the removed app variable here. So if the app number of this instance is greater than the removed app, then I want this one to shift to the left by, um, by 285 pixels. So we're going to say move. And we want to move the app layer. And instead of move to, we're going to move by. And it'd be negative 285 pixels on the X axis. And that should be everything we need. But let me explain again what's going on. I have a pull trigger set up on the app. And when I pull it at least 100 pixels in the vertical direction upwards, then it's going to move the app tile fully off screen. We're using a range trigger to detect the Y property of the app. And when it reaches negative 500, we are sending the shift message to all of the components. All of the components have a receive in here. And we're sending along in the send message, by the way, the app number of the one being removed. The receive receives that app number, assigns it to the removed app variable. And then we compare. We compare the component instances app number to removed app. And if it's greater than removed app number, we are moving the app tile to the left by 285 pixels. This should be all we need to do. So let's go back to our scene and try this out. So I'm going to preview this and let's go over by one. I'm going to snap this out and there you go. We have our app switcher prototyped. There you go, easy as pie. If you run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, please check out the link in the description below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.